A good rule is more accurate and more versatile than a measuring tape, and once you have one, there's a lot you can do with it. Some of those things are obvious, such as just measuring something or using it as a straight edge. But let me show you a couple of handy rule tricks that may not have been so obvious to a lot of you. We'll start with an easy one, using your hand as a fence to repeat a measurement. Let's say I have to mark six inches from the end of several boards. I measure six inches, then I grip the rule with my fingers against the end of the workpiece. This becomes a stop so I can repeat the same measurement as many times and on as many boards as I like, just as long as I don't change my grip on the rule. The same trick can be used to draw a line parallel to an edge or an end. My fingers serve as a fence as the end of the rule guides my pencil point across the end or down the length of the board. If you don't trust your grip to remain consistent, you always have the marks on the rule to monitor the accuracy of your work. Another useful rule trick is to divide a board into equal parts. Let's say five. I'll angle my rule so that the zero point, the corner, is on one edge and the five inch mark is on the other. Now I can mark off my five equal sections. Of course, this worked because my board was narrower in inches than the number of segments that I wanted to divide it into. But what if that wasn't the case? What if I wanted to divide a seven inch-ish board into four equal sections? Well, in that case, I might align the zero point with one edge and the eight point with the other. Then my segments would be every two inches instead of every inch. The key is to pick a spot on the rule that is evenly divisible by the number of segments you want. Then I might go back to that finger trick and extend those lines down the full length of the workpiece. You can also use a rule as a square for laying out a line perpendicular to an edge. Place something flat against that edge and put the end of the rule against that surface to square it up so you can scribe your line. Sometimes you may need to measure or mark something that's longer than your rule. In that case, pull out your second rule, maybe a six incher from your apron pocket. Now you could place this right at the end of the first one and continue the scale, but to simplify the math, you might instead align the zero point with the 10 inch mark on the first rule, or 10 centimeters. Now you can count off 11, 12, 13, and so on. I love these black rules because they're easy to read, but there is a benefit to having a silver rule. You can write on it with a pencil. This is great for saving and transferring multiple measurements, but it only works well if your rule has a satin finish. These benchmark rules come in black or satin silver and are of excellent quality. They're also available in metric. I'll link to a source in the video description box below or pinned to the top of the comments that has them for just a few bucks. I highly recommend buying one. They're not expensive, but they sure make life in the shop easier. Now for the best part of the video. MyWoodcutters.com is the sort of small business I like to support. Stefan is a great guy and he can find you knives and cutters for almost any joiner, planer, shaper, or molding machine. And his are the best prices if you're planning to upgrade to a helical carbide cutter head. Please use the link below this video to check with him before you buy somewhere else. Some small businesses are just worth supporting.